My next guest is an example of what can happen when life throws you a curveball. Austin Brantley enrolled in a ceramics class in high school in order to boost his GPA, but it turned out to be a life-changing decision. 19-year-old Austin is now an emerging artist whose work has been on display at galleries and art fairs, including the African World Festival here in Detroit and Arts, Beats and Eats. Plus, he has a solo exhibition coming up at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. Austin was featured last year in an episode of Detroit Performs here on Detroit Public Television. And on September 18th, he's going to be one of the artists at the Detroit Performs Live event at the Fillmore Theater. I'm pleased to have Austin Brantley here on American Black Journal. Welcome. Thank and you, welcome to two pieces, magnificent wor examples of your work. Uh, I, I'm not sure how well this translates <laughs> on television, but the detail that is evident in uh, these sculptures is really just uh, amazing. Uh, I, I was telling you before the show that, that sculpture is my favorite medium. I really, really relate to the, to the three-dimensional nature uh, of that expression of art, and I'm really blown away by the, the pieces you brought you. here. And, and to be 19 and doing this, <laughs> I think, uh, makes it even more remarkable. Uh, so congratulations to you, first of all, on, on, on all your great work. Uh, tell me, how did, you, how did you figure out that uh, ceramics was something and sculpture was something that you could do and be good at? Uh, you signed up for this course. Uh, seeking something different, uh, yeah. and this is what you found. <laughs> yeah, when I started, I I wanted to um, just have an easy, uh, you know, yeah. use my GPA <laughs> right? in high school. And, uh, We've all done that before. <laughs> it's, uh, that's so not a I thought ceramics was that class that yeah. you know, just helped me out, and then uh, it turned out it changed my whole life. I mean, was it in that class that you figured out that, hey, this is something I'm really interested in? <laughs> I found my passion in, and. Um, it kind of it kind of found me at the same time because uh -huh. I was just like the first day I wore gloves I didn't even want to touch the clay I thought it was so <laughs> dirty and then I started making these faces and they started speaking back to me almost because uh -huh. I was able to get so much detail into them and um, I started to express myself in the clay and from then on it was just like uh, almost like a conversation every day. Wow. Working. Between you and the, yeah. the material. Yeah. And, and so in this class, were you, were you drawing these faces from your mind? Were you drawing them from images? I mean, where did, just, where did it come yeah, from? Yeah, just from, just from up here and, and here. So yeah. I was just following my heart, you know, just following what I instinctively felt like I was being very intuitive with my medium. Uh huh. And and is that where uh, where most of the work is coming from for you now? Mm -hmm. Even that that you're not these so these these pieces we're looking at are not models of uh, people that you were looking at while you were doing mm -hmm. it. These are faces that are in your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. And where where do you think they're coming from? <laughs> um, I have a lot of African art influences and also you know, classical sculptors, uh -huh. influences. So I'm looking at everything. And then I have live models that I use as well. So they bear, they inspire me with their, with the poses and that I pick out for uh -huh. them. And then also, I'm trying to also transform that energy into clay. Yeah, uh, and and the models are, are uh, the, the, the two sculptures we're looking at are both worked in clay, this, correct? Yeah, these, this is from my imagination, while this one is from a model. Okay, okay. And wh what, do you, what, do you, what would you say this piece that we're looking at, the head, uh, looking up, uh, looking a little, uh, certainly introspective, mm -hmm. uh, wh what is this piece saying? Um, this piece is called I Exist. It's the actual second series that I've done of um, another, another piece called I Exist. But this one is that one was more confused and angry, while this one is more to overcome your oppressor. Um, it represents American slavery and all the uh, tarnished and kind of um, all the uh, forms are kind of just like scratched over sure. and rough and crude, but um, it represents his, his face is calm though, so it represents going through all that drama, all that struggle. All yeah, he's thinking there. He's uh -huh. somewhere He's somewhere other than yeah. uh, with the misery that he mm -hmm. might be uh, experiencing. And that, and, that, and that just came to you, that, that <laughs> yeah. idea. Wow. Uh, and, and what about this other piece here? This piece is called uh, Contemplation. It's called uh, Contemplation because it's supposed to be uh, thought-provoking. So it needs to have like a lot of expression in it. So it needs to... 
Yeah, I mean, the pose Those of the, the model kind of is, is, is very myself. expressive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it, she's saying something very specific mm -hmm. with the way that her body is posed. Was that the way that you had the model yeah. pose uh, mm -hmm. for, the, for the thing, for the, for the sculpture? Yeah. Um, talk about where, where you see this going for you. I mean, obviously, uh, you've gotten a lot of recognition <laughs> at a very young age for, uh, for this. Uh, how are you refining the skill? Is this something that you need to, that you feel like uh, you need to study? Uh, I'm practicing every day. And, yeah. And, uh, I seek out other sculptors from all over the world and ask for their opinions uh -huh. and what they think about um, the forms that we use. So um, I'm always teaching myself and practicing in my studio every day. Yeah. It's just kind of like, um, it's like living itself has become the art. Yeah. Uh, who are some of the sculptors that you find the most sort of inspiring, either in history or, or, or modern? Uh, in history, definitely um, August Rodin. The, uh huh, Rodin. The thinker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, we've got a, a couple of good examples just around town, right? <laughs> yeah, that you yeah, can go yeah. look at. August. And and I see, I definitely see that influence. Oh, thank, uh, you. thank in, you. In this piece in particular, the sort of roughness. Of uh, of the fa of the the hair and mm -hmm. the, the 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 very fine detail uh, is is similar to to what we see on the thinker. Oh, thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and who are some of the other influences uh, for you? Uh, John Lorenzo Bernini from the Baroque period. Uh huh. I'm just uh -huh. studying all these um, different time zones where art has changed and things. Like different simple things matter, like how how the pose is for Michelangelo. Like it changes over time. People sure. try and like break loose from different things and break the rules. So yeah. I tried to notice that and study it and amplify it into my uh, artwork. Yeah, and so you grew up here in in Detroit and. Went to Detroit Public Schools, or uh, I went to uh, Berkeley High School. You went to Berkeley High School, okay, uh, and that's where you had this ceramics class that uh, uh, that inspired you. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, what What would you say to uh, other young people who are interested in 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 art about how to how to make that translation from here's something I'm doing in class to here's something that's now defining my life? Mm -hmm. um, I would say not to get discouraged because at a young age you can. Like uh, when you're drawing or something, you can get real discouraged that it's not looking the way you want it to. But you have to remember that art is very introspective and subjective. So you have to just kind of um, not go with the flow, but just follow your heart. And also yeah, I, I, that's a really, really uh -huh. uh, interesting way to put it. Talk about that, though. How do you follow? How do you follow that? How do you feel that that uh -huh. first time? Uh, in a way that it comes out in the art for me, it's, for me it's clay because clay takes the form of anything any shape that you press into it so it's really um, expressive and you can do so much with it you breathe on it and it changes and it changes like, yeah, sure. so it's, um, um, it's really I can actually put it's like I can transfer my energy into it it takes the shape of it can take the shape of anything uh -huh. so that's just what I remember that I can do anything yeah yeah. Limited with clay. So, what will your your exhibition uh, include at the at the Charles H. Wright? That's a big deal too, uh, right? We're still setting up all the details <laughs> and everything. But, uh -huh. um, hopefully, um, most of my biggest works and and uh, and just a variety of um, all my thoughts and kind of um, how I manifest my visions in the clay. Yeah. And and uh, we should say, people can visit your gallery, uh, <laughs> and your work is for sale, right? Yeah. <laughs> we were talking yeah. about that before. I think maybe you might be lowballing on some of the prices. Uh, it could it could raise those a little, but uh, it really is, it really is amazing work. Well, thank you, uh, thank and, you. Uh, congratulations again on all of your success. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks for being here. Thank you. Okay, again, you can see Austin's artwork at Detroit Performs Live on Friday, September 18th at the Fillmore in downtown Detroit. That event is a gala fundraiser for Detroit Public Television, and it features visual artists and musical performers, including Alexander Zanjic, Betty Levette, Ty Stone, Jessica Hernandez, and many, many more PBS favorites. You can buy tickets at dptv.org. That's our program for today. Thanks for watching. You can get more information about our guests at AmericanBlackJournal.org. And as always, connect with us on Facebook and on Twitter. Plus, you can hear our program on WDET 1019 FM. We'll see you next time.